Hello lovelies, welcome to my channel. So today I'm going to be talking about shocking old Hollywood diet secrets and exercise routines of famous old Hollywood stars from the past. So let's jump right in and no particular order, I'm going to go through and talk about different famous old Hollywood movie stars. And the first one on the list is Marilyn Monroe who is super popular in the 1950s and 60s. And I have featured her diet and exercise routine and morning routine in some other videos, so make sure you check those out. And Marilyn Monroe discussed her bizarre diet and eating habits in the 1952 issue of Paget Magazine, which is no longer in print, but this was an exclusive interview. And her breakfast consisted of two raw eggs whipped in hot milk. Her favorite dinner was either steak, lamb chops, or liver with raw carrots. And she would also indulge with a hot fudge sundae after her evening drama classes. So Marilyn Rowe led the Atkins diet, which was low carb and high protein and fat. And Marilyn Rowe was quoted to say, Before I take my morning shower, I start warming up a cup of milk on the hot plate. I keep in my hotel room. When it's hot, I break two raw eggs into the milk, whip them up with a fork and drink them while I'm dressing. I supplement this with a multivitamin pill and I doubt if any doctor could recommend a more nourishing breakfast for a working girl in a hurry. And next on the list is Audrey Hepburn. And Audrey Hepburn's diet starts kind of with a tragic and sad beginning. So Audrey Hepburn almost starved to death during World War II, which contributed to her thin figure later in life. She survived the German occupation of Holland, which began when she was just 11 years old. By the end of the war, Audrey was very close to death. She survived by eating nettles and tulip bulbs and drank a lot of water to fill her stomach. She was five foot six and only weighed 88 pounds during this time. And later in life, once Audrey Hepburn became famous for breakfast, she would have brown bread and jam. And her lunch consisted of veal or pasta. And she would pair this veal or pasta with fresh vegetables from the garden. And for dinner, Audrey would have soup with chicken and vegetables. And for dessert, she would indulge in baking chocolate. And every evening, she would have a finger or two of scotch. And apparently, once a month, Audrey would have a detox day where she would only eat fruits, veggies, yogurt, and a ton of water to detox her system. And I really like this idea. I kind of do this once a week where I have a fast day. So I kind of like where she was coming from with that. And next on the list is the Elizabeth Taylor diet. So Elizabeth Taylor, in her younger years, she was notorious for eating basically whatever she wanted. And this was in the 1960s. Her typical daily diet consisted of bacon and scrambled eggs for breakfast. For lunch, she would have peanut butter and bacon sandwiches. And for dinner, she would regularly have fried chicken, mashed potatoes, cornbread, and green peas. It wasn't until the 1980s, later in her life, when she weighed over 180 pounds and was mocked in the media. So she wanted to go on a diet, and by the late 1980s, she figured out how to lose weight by going on a diet she created for herself. She later translated this diet into a book called Elizabeth Takes Off. The book contains valuable advice like eating lots of fruits, vegetables, and lean protein. The book also consists of some very strange recipes like mixing cottage cheese with sour cream and steak and peanut butter sandwiches. Elizabeth Taylor would also have one day a week where she would pig out and eat whatever she wanted. And this included eating fried chicken, mashed potatoes with gravy and lima beans, corn and chocolate cake. And I really like this idea too, because I really don't see the point in completely starving yourself and not indulging in certain things you like. So I like the idea of once a week, just kind of going nuts and eating what you want. And next on the list is Sophia Loren. And Sophia Loren has been known to endorse the Mediterranean diet. And this diet emphasizes eating fresh vegetables, fruit, fish, whole grains, and olive oil. And Sophia Loren once famously said, everything you see I owe to spaghetti. And she actually has several cookbooks that are all Italian inspired recipes like Tuscan bean soup. And there's plenty of pasta recipes in there, including her famous lemon pasta recipe. So when I first started 
YouTube. I really didn't know how to do any video editing or how to edit photos when I first started my blog. I was Googling online different classes I could take and I actually learned everything on Skillshare and this was a few years ago. So I learned how to use Adobe Lightroom on Skillshare and I also took a few courses on Instagram and just YouTube SEO. It really helped me launch my YouTube channel a few years ago and it's super affordable. It's only $10 a month to try Skillshare and I have a membership and I always go on there at least a few times a year to like refresh my skills and I plan on taking a few new courses as well. There's lots of good marketing courses on there especially since everything's always changing with social media and Instagram it's good to keep your skills up or if you just want to take a fun creative class like painting or drawing they're all on there and the first thousand people to use my link in the description box will get a free trial of Skillshare premium membership. So make sure you click the link below to join. And there's so many classes on there, so I'm excited to hear from you guys and see what you end up taking. And next on the list is Mae West. And Mae West never tried to slim down and diet like other old Hollywood stars. Instead of dieting, she would speak up about fattening up her parts by eating cream chicken, buttered toast, lobster Newberg, and chocolate whipped cake. Her secret to achieving her famous curvy figure was her custom corsets. She famously said, what can be accomplished by the feminine figure once is nipped here and there and allowed free reign elsewhere. You'd be surprised. And next is Katherine Hepburn. And Katherine Hepburn claimed that she was never a health nut. And she says, I deny myself nothing. I think what you should eat is perfectly obvious. I just don't care to eat those things, so I don't. We live in an era of making a great deal out of very little. They make a big deal out of diets. I've never been on a diet in my life, quotes Katherine Hepburn. Even though she indulged whenever she wanted, and this include one of her favorite foods, chocolate brownies, she actually had a very rigorous exercise routine and played lots of different sports. She was very athletic, which allowed her to indulge more in her favorite foods. And next is Jean Harlow's diet. So Jean Harlow put herself on a rigorous diet to slim down before her movie roles. And her diet plan consisted of two tomatoes and a grilled meat for lunch and dinner. And for breakfast, she would have just black coffee or an orange juice. And she would also have an occasional hard-boiled egg and a handful of spinach. And Jean Harlow's diet was definitely ahead of its time and similar to the modern day Atkins diet, which is low carb and emphasizes high protein. And she worked with Donald Loomis, MGM's in-house trainer, where she practiced jumping rope for exercise. And next on the list is Greta Garbo. And Greta Garbo had a reputation for being very private and she was essentially a recluse. And she became friends with the nutritionist Gaylord Hauser and she followed all of his fad diet suggestions. And Hauser's philosophy was based on eating wonder foods to live longer. And this included drinking brewer's yeast mixed with buttermilk as well as eating wheat germ and molasses. And Garbo also kept up with the latest fitness trends, including yoga, tennis, swimming, and skiing. And she even owned a juicer and would juice green juices before this was even a trend. And she also didn't have any additives in her food, including preservatives, sugar, salt, caffeine, or starches. So Greta Garbo was definitely ahead of her time. And I recently discovered this perfume and it's inspired by Greta Garbo. It's called Room Service and Twisted Lily Fragrances sent me this perfume. It's part of the cinema collection. And this perfume is a tribute to Greta Garbo, a woman who chose to be herself, critics be damned. And so this perfume is inspired by Greta Garbo's rose bath. So picture Greta Garbo alone in her hotel room, attired in a drift of satin, while waiting her ultimate luxurious bath in rose petals. The warm water releasing the collision of citrus, red fruits, bamboo, violet, black, amber, and sandalwood. So this is a very sophisticated floral fragrance. The top notes are mandarin, nectar, blackberry, the heart are pink orchid, bamboo, 
and the base is black amber musk and sandalwood so i'll link this below and i also have a promo code for you and honestly this perfume is actually quite incredible it's very high end i can just tell that it's really good quality and it's very long lasting it's one of my favorite perfumes and it's very unique and i quite like that it's not very common so not everyone has this perfume so make sure you check it out with the link below and next on the list is Clara Bow. And Clara Bow was famous during the Jazz Age in the 1920s. And during this period, actresses had a weight clause in their contract to keep their weight under 118 pounds. Clara Bow only ate about 500 calories a day. Her typical diet consisted of orange juice for breakfast, toast and salad without dressing for lunch, and she had no meat for dinner. And she also did outdoor sports like swimming and hiking and she played tennis every evening and rode a horse every morning. And next is Ginger Rogers, and Ginger Rogers trained with Donald Loomis at MGM, and her main form of exercise was dancing. And she also favored southern style food like fried chicken and gravy. And next is Betty Grable, and Betty Grable was popular in the pinup modeling scene in the 1940s, and she was famous for her legs. She would train through dancing to get these world famous legs. And she trained with Dick Klein, who was known to promote fun exercise routines called bird pecking. This is where you would pucker out your lips and pecking forward like a bird to avoid a double chin. And Betty liked to snack on onions and garlic for food. And I find that very interesting. I feel like you had terrible breath if you did that. And next is Rita Hayworth, and Rita Hayworth stayed slim by dancing eight hours a day. She also had a rigorous diet and never ate starches, greasy foods, and avoided all bread and pastries. And next is Ava Gardner. Ava Gardner did not follow a strict diet and indulged in a very high calorie diet, but she wouldn't gain any weight because of her busy schedule and her nervous stomach, making it impossible to eat. As a result, she had to eat to gain weight and chose high calorie foods like candy, dairy, and high carb buttery foods. So it sounds like she suffered from a lot of stage fright during filming. And next on the list is Grace Kelly. And Grace Kelly did not have a lot of time to exercise, so she would focus on a dieting instead. And she would only eat small portions and had light snacks such as yogurt and berries and had a say no to dessert policy. She would eat oatmeal every morning for breakfast and this would allow her to just stay full on set but she would also come to set prepared. She would bring carrot sticks and celery and dried apricots if she got hungry before 11 a.m. And next is Jane Russell and Jane Russell hated diets and never counted calories. She would cut out alcoholic drinks if she needed to cut back and she also played tennis and golf. So it sounds like Jane Russell really didn't have any crazy or strict diets. And next on the list is actress Gloria Swanson, and she was way ahead of her time and a trailblazer for health. In the 1920s, she would practice clean eating and cut out sugar and meat from her diet. In the 1950s, after she finished filming Sunset Boulevard, she became devoted to practicing yoga and would lecture others on fitness and healthy eating. Finally is Joan Crawford, and I found an old article from a 1929 magazine called Photoplay, and Joan Crawford's diet from the 1920s was mentioned. So in the 1920s, based on this article, Joan Crawford would only have a few tablespoons of cold broth for lunch, a side dish of rhubarb, and then half a dozen crackers with mustard on it. And this sounds pretty extreme, and this was kind of her diet when she had to perform. It sounds like she probably had to stick to under 118 pounds, similar to Clara Bow. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you'd be willing to try any of these diets in the comments below. Also, please don't forget to check out my YouTube membership. And with this membership, you get a bonus a video a month. And this is more of a DIY, behind the scenes video. I do vlogs and I also have a monthly live stream where I do my Redbird Vintage unboxing and a question and answer. And you also get 20% off Vintage Doll Cosmetics. This is my vintage inspired beauty brand. And with your first purchase, you also get a free vintage inspired mirror. So this is all linked below. And you can join my membership right next to my subscribe button. You will see a join button. So I hope to see you guys there. All right, I'll see you soon. Bye.